Hey guys, it's Heather at Our Faithful Journey. In today's video, I'm going to do a fifth grade curriculum haul with you. Most of the stuff I got from Rainbow Resource, which is probably my absolute favorite place to buy homeschool um, curriculum and resources. A few things I got from eBay, a few things I already had, um, Amazon, and I think that's pretty much it. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and get started. So if you're new to me, welcome. I have been homeschooling my daughter since she was in third grade. I was a previous high school teacher and high school counselor. Um, and so I do have a lot of information on high school in that regard. Uh, but my fifth grader, which is this is all about him today, is uh, he, he has been homeschooling since pretty much the second half of his kindergarten year. And over the years, we have realized that he does have a dyslexia, dysgraphia, and dyscalculia. And so some of these things you might say, well, that's fifth grade, but you're doing a fourth grade level or whatever. And it's because I do what works best for him, which sometimes is going down a level. Or I do something that is good for the pocketbook. I already have it and there's not that much difference. So I'm going to go ahead and use it. So as I go through all that, just know those things. So for math, I'm going to start with the easy one. We do Matthew C. Uh, we prefer, I prefer a mastery approach for him. My daughter does, or has always done spiral approach, but he does best with mastery, which is Matthew C. We are doing the Delta, which is um, single and double digit division. Now, because he does have dyscalculia, one of the telltale signs of that is they have uh, problems retaining rote memory, like math facts. And so I have a whole lot of information on that on other videos if you want to go back and look. But one of the things that I will incorporate are these simple math, these simple multiplication, since we're doing division now, um, math facts books that are, and he will do one a day. Like this one's timed. He won't be doing it timed. But it's just so he can work on that rote memory. Because at the end of the day, you don't want to necessarily hold your child back if they don't know their math facts. Um, because a lot of times they will still understand the process. So like he understands the process of multi, multi or excuse me, multiple digit multiplication. But just that four times eight is 32, he might not remember. Does that make sense? So he, under, he can learn the process well but it's the rote memory he has problems with. So just think about that if that's something your kiddo struggles with. Okay, next I'm gonna talk about our wonderful history. I love history. And we use Mystery of History. It is a Bible-based. It starts at creation, which we did last uh, year for level one. This is level two. And it is early church in the Middle Ages. I always get the CD because there are names, guys, <laughs> in other languages. Um, historical, you know, historical names that I just cannot pronounce. And so I always get the CD. We listen to it. It gives my me a break from having to read out loud something again. And the way we do this is basic. We do a Charlotte Mason approach in the sense of, so we'll go through the lesson. We'll listen to it. I'll stop every couple of paragraphs and he will do oral narration. He's still not quite there on written narration. And so he'll do oral narration and we'll discuss it, etc. And that's kind of the the gist of how we do history. Um, if it's something he's really interested in, then I'll find like a YouTube video or something like that to go over it more. History is not his favorite. He prefers science, but he does remember and does retain the, the information, mostly because I do have him uh, do the narration. So that is something that's key to just kind of, you know, getting them to remember it. Okay, for science, we are going to do three units. So the first will be a bird study. So for our spine, I'm going to use these two. I'm going to use the Apologia um, Zoology 1 Flying Creatures on the fifth day, and then the DK Bird Book. And so I will not go and we will not do this verbatim, like everything um, in here. I will go and I'll choose what information I want us to learn about. We love birds in our household. We love watching movies about birds. There's actually a movie with Steve Martin about birding and we love it. I can't think of the name of it. But anyways, we love seeing birds. We love listening, identifying, etc. So this is gonna be right up our alley. Um, and so again, I'll use those two for spines. I like bringing in some type of art when I can. And so for this, I make copies using um, 
our Canon copier and I just put in watercolor paper. You can buy watercolor paper for the purpose of copying. And then we will watercolor. We might even, cause it's kind of small detail, use like watercolor pencils. I bought this fun bird log and I was gonna do all, I was gonna do three, one for me, my daughter and him. But I figured, you know what? We'll just do it for the family. And we plan on going on a trip in September to Colorado. So that'll be fun being able to see some maybe different birds that we don't necessarily see here in Texas. Just some things like this. Like I have this bird bingo you can see back behind me. This is match a pair of birds. So just playing these games. Oh, here's, I love this resource. This bird song book. I've had the ones in the before that were like the back yard one they're like little circles with the picture of the bird and you and made the bird call well this one is 250 and so it you so you find what the number is you can scroll over to the number it makes the call sound of the bird and then gives also information on it so i love this book and then of course here's an owl pellet funny story real quick i had this and i was bringing them out and i was showing my daughter what i got and she noticed there was just one now she's 15 going into 11th grade and she looked at me like, um, why is there just one? <laughs> so I said, did you want me to buy one for you to dissect with us? And she said, yes. So I have another, uh, actually a two pack coming uh, from Amazon. So that should be coming in the next week or two. It's funny though, how our older kids still like doing this elementary level stuff. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do the elective, I guess electives. I plan on doing, because of the, we're doing birds, we always do some type of art. So I got the Law's Guide to Drawing Birds. None, but nobody in my family's artist. I'm just gonna throw that out there. <laughs> but that doesn't mean we don't attempt, right? So we're gonna attempt to to see if we can learn how to draw birds, um, like for bird, for journaling and stuff like that. And then also, and I apologize, I don't have the books. I just ordered them on eBay. And so I'm still waiting for those to come in. But Window Stars, and they use kite paper. I don't know if you've ever seen it before, um, but I will definitely do a review on everything. If you're interested in anything I show you, let me know and I will do a look through as well. Okay, the next thing is boys body book. And my daughter had the girls one. Um, I already told my husband, this might be something that I have them go over. I will probably pre-read and just, there's just some things that maybe, you know, the dad needs to go over. And so if not, if I feel like it's okay, then, then him and I will do it together. So anyway, so he's at that age where he needs to start, you know, we need to start discussing things. So I decided this is part of the curriculum this year. Okay, the next thing, we do geography as a family subject, but um, I've always had like a geography book for him to do, like just learning about how to read a map and, you know, the differences between like a plateau and a mesa, and, you know, all those types of things. And so he loves geography. He likes doing these little like worksheets. So I decided we used to just do it in fourth grade, one day a week. He has requested more independent work. He sees that his sister does it. And the reason why he doesn't is because of his um, differences. I like to call them differences instead of, you know, disorders or whatever. Um, but because of dyslexia and all of that, he does need my help a little bit more. And it's not because he doesn't comprehend because he does. It's just usually with the reading. And so um, I went ahead and bought this. I went ahead and got fifth grade level because it's a lot of stuff that he's seen before anyways. But he's going to do this every day as part of his independent work. With, of course, me being close by in case he needs help. So somehow I skipped over the other two sciences we're doing. So let me jump back into science. Okay, we're going to do a chemistry study. And it's going to be obviously the very, very basics. Um, so I got this Bachelor of Science Chemistry, Getting the Big Reaction. And I don't know if you've ever seen this. They have a whole lot. Um, but I like it because it is very, to me, is very elementary level um, information, but it still goes over the content. So when they see it later on, you know, they have that memory of, oh, I've seen that before. And so we're going to go over this. I'm going to use this little tiny book as my spine. We're also going to use this periodic table flip. My daughter's doing chemistry this year. Um, I'm not sure how much he will be able to do this game. It's called um, Periodic, the Game of Elements. But I think maybe like her and I, like him and I can be on a team and she can be by herself. And since she's doing chemistry too, this will be something that's fun that we can do all together during like our family time, our family uh, study time. I also got this Cool Reactions Chemistry Kit. 
And that's another thing that some of y'all might agree or maybe disagree. I think don't ever be afraid to do these games that might be a little bit above the child's level. And then again, you can always do it where you are um, like on a team together. And it's amazing how much they pick up because you're doing it with them. And so just that's something to think about. Okay, back to the chemistry kit. So I just picked up this pretty simple chemistry kit. I think it has like two or three different experiments in here. And then I have these Everything Kids Science Experiment book and this Outdoor Science Lab. And so what I'll do is I'll go through these two and I will pick out chemistry-based um, experiments that we can do. And then also I will go to the library. I'll go to Pinterest, just like all of y'all do. And I will get more experiment because he actually really likes experiments. And so with chemistry, that's something that I promised him that we would do a lot of. I will ask y'all, do y'all know of a chemistry that would be more elementary, middle school level for cooking? That's like cooking, but with chemistry lab type stuff. So if you do, let me know that down below because I would love to see that. The other science that I'm going to do, and I've shown y'all this before, we planned on doing it last year, we never got to it, is machines in motion. So my husband, I asked him, I was like, is there anything that you want us to work on and he said well he needs to I, like more mechanical type work so things that he's putting to get together and understanding the mechanical side of things and um that is something that he is not like he's not really big on give me legos he likes to play with legos but he doesn't want you to tell him how to make it does that make sense and so we're working on building things from a, a mechanical perspective that have directions. So I bought a bunch of these smart act, um, smartivity kits. I have this one, which is Flying Machine, Speedster, Roverbot, and it's like a two-in-one. Angle drag racing or drag race. And then this space rocket one. And the way I plan on doing this is that we will go through um, we will we will go through the different parts of of machines in motion and then like probably one day a week and then one day a week we will do uh, one of these activities. Now, one, two, three, four, five. This is only five. And like I said, it'll probably be about 11 weeks worth of stuff. And so we will, what I plan on doing when we get through these, if he just loves them, then I'll order more. Or I would love to find a book where you have to like maybe go to Home Depot and like buy the stuff to be able to build it. Like I kind of want to do something like that because again, I want it to be really real world hands-on type stuff. So that is my goal. I will let you know how it works out. Um, the last thing I'm gonna talk about is ELA. Now, this is our ELA. I feel like there's so much. This is our ELA. So the first thing I'm gonna show you is something to do with phonics and word study. Now, I told you all, um, so he's in fifth grade. We just finished all about reading level four. I was such an awesome program, especially for someone who's dyslexic. If you have somebody that's dyslexic and they're struggling, I think All About Reading is a great program. I think it's great for any reader, but especially a dyslexic reader. Uh, but I wanted him, because just like with the math, he benefits from doing a little bit every day to keep up that knowledge. And so I got this phonics and word study. And so I plan on him doing one of these every day. It starts out very, very basic. It, again, it's something that I think he can do on his own independently. Of course, I'll be by, you know, to help if needed. But I got this, this is for grades four to six. But I got this in mind of I want him to keep those those phonic skills going. And so I have that. Um, he's really good at cursive and he enjoys doing cursive. And so I got this cursive writing practice, inspiring quotes. And it's grade three to six. And so I thought that would be fun. For spelling, we use all about spelling. Again, I love the all about learning resources. Oh, that's another thing I forgot. Um, we're going to be all about, this isn't all about, this is, a, um, it's the handwriting without tears company and it is the typing. And I apologize. I just thought about that. That is something that we're also going to do for um, electives, I guess, would be typing. Okay, but back to spelling. We're going to use level four. We just graduated from level three. So we're going to move on to that. 
I don't know how much I will use this, but I know I think I do. I do believe vocabulary is very big, and so um, even if it's just you know taking a word and and writing sentences with it or whatever, uh, I haven't decided how I'm going to use this yet. Sometimes it's getting the stuff in front of you and really you know figuring it out. Okay, for writing, so I wanted him this last year to start writing more stories and things like that. He will tell me stories and I will write them out, but he is still not, he still at this time was not to the level of writing out paragraphs at a time to make stories by himself. So what we're gonna work on that this year, I wanted to do it last year, he just wasn't ready. So we're going to do it this year. And because we don't have phonics, I'm going to go heavy on the writing. And so we're going to start out with this um, Kumon's writing. It is a grade four, but I don't think that matters. And really go into um, what does a good sentence look like, sentence structure, and all of that. And then these two I showed y'all last year. We ended up really not using them. But I'm going to do this beginning outline. Again, it was one of those we tried it. It's just, it's just not, he just was not ready. He was not ready. And so, but I still think it's a great resource. And again, it's a three to four grade. It doesn't matter. Go where your, your kiddo is. If your kiddo's in fifth grade, but they their writing is more of a third grade base. And then also remember this. This is probably more geared towards public school age. And I think, this is my opinion, I think they push writing too fast in public school. I think a lot of kids don't, aren't, don't excel at writing because they're not ready for writing. And so um, that's just my two cents. But I am going to do this outlining made simple with him early on and we're gonna just dive in and get going. And then this is a four to sixth grade, um, how to write a story. And so probably mid-year, we will jump into this book. Um, for grammar, this is, I have, I, he did third grade last year because it's what we had. I didn't want to just waste the resource. I also had a fourth and a fifth because I was gifted these from a fellow homeschool family. And so instead of just throwing away, you know, the third grade, I was like, well, we'll just use it for fourth. We'll use fourth for fifth and fifth for sixth. And it will work out. And if you read, if you go in to the table of contents and you read through, there's really not much difference. Maybe, maybe one thing different, um, but pretty much as y'all all know, it's, it's that working on it every year to be able to master grammar. Normally though, I will say this, normally I would have just used the teacher because if you notice, let me see if I have a good one. If you notice the, the teacher has a blank side and then a side that has the answers. And when I was doing it with him, I was able to kind of cover it. And I don't think he ever realized it, but this is something that he actually does pretty good with grammar. And so I am giving him his own book without the answers. Um, Cause he would definitely notice it if I was not sitting there right with him. And this is something else that we're going to go slowly but hopefully get into the groove of him doing independently as well. Okay, the last thing he will definitely not be doing independently and that's okay. Oh, hold on, one more thing uh, before that. Word ladders, this is definitely independent work. We'll probably do it one or two times a week. He loves doing it. Um, this will probably be a, a, something that we'll use for two years because if we only do it one or two times a week. And again, it's something that he's pretty good at. And so he might have questions on spelling or something like that, but He's actually pretty good at knowing, you know, what knowing what the answer is. Okay, the last thing is reading. So we just got finished with phonics. Um, he is his reading is extremely improving, but um, he is dyslexic, and so it, it's not that they can't read. It's not that you know it does take longer usually to to grasp it, but. Um, again, that's why I love all about reading because he thinks back to the rules. Okay. What's the rules? And that's how I break down words, etc. And the more you practice, the more they see the words, the more they're going to remember them, right? We all know this. That is why reading is so important for you to do every day with your child, not just you reading, but them reading. We've never really focused on, even with the all about reading programs and they kind of, you know, would touch on here and there with setting or plot or whatever. We never really focused on any of that. 
So I went ahead and got the Kumon's fourth grade reading where they really go into things like cause and effect, main ideas, characters, reading comprehension, and all of that. And so I know he has reading comprehension because we usually discuss books a lot that we read together. Uh, but this will bring it more into what it might look like on a test, you know, later on. And so um, I am, I don't, I'm not necessarily a fan of this type of stuff because I do lean more towards Charlotte Mason. But for my, for him, I think it will benefit him just to kind of look at it. So I'm not going to harp on it hard, but um, this is something that we will start out with. Now, when we kind of get through this and see how well he's doing with this, um, we are, we will go ahead and start doing book studies with study guides. Okay. So I have Charlotte Webb, The Courage of Sarah Noble, Keep the Lights Burning, Abby. And again, these are these early on. These are some of the ones we'll do early on because they're shorter. He's actually read both of these, but he's never done the book study with it or the, you know, the study guide. So we'll see how that works. Um, I want to get, I used to have Sarah Plain and Tall, but I don't know where it's at. So I need to get that. And then before we get to these, this will probably be more like middle of the first semester. Because remember, I'm going to use this first. So before, but I still want him reading every day. So I picked up on eBay, I'm waiting for it to come in, the book Twitch. Let me know down below if you've read that book. I've heard it's really good. And the Lemonade, and the Lemonade Escapade. So I'm waiting both of those to come in. They were kind of pricey on um, Amazon. So I got, went over to eBay and got them a little cheaper. I could definitely get them from the library if they're there. The only problem is... I feel like it's going to be a longer, a longer extended period for some of us, you know, some of the books for us to read just because we, he does read at a slower pace. That's another thing. Just so any of you mamas out there who maybe you do have a struggling reader, but you're ready for them to get into chapter books. What him and I do is he reads a page. I read a page. So normally the first page is always on the right. So those are his. And then I would read this. He would read that, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Um, I try to, I've always tried to incorporate books that have to do with like nonfiction books that have to do with whatever science we're talking about or biographies, things like that, if it has to do with history. And I haven't really found a whole lot for this history cycle or necessarily, or this science, the sciences that we're doing. So I picked up this, The Minstrel in the Tower, which is based in 1195. So we'll get to this probably more mid-year at some point. Um, both of my kids love dogs, so I got this book, Shiloh. I think this was my daughter's book, to be honest. And then I bought these a few years ago for my son, and he just wasn't ready. And so I got the Stepping Stones chapter book, the Jungle Book, and the Stepping Stones Robin Hood. And they're both, if you've never heard of it, they're called Stepping Stones. And so they're just kind of a condensed version of the originals. They're usually classics and like Robin Hood, obviously this would fit this time period and he loves the Jungle Book. So I went ahead and got those back down and don't be, if that's another thing. I mean, I have so many resources that I have, I pick up because maybe they're priced well, knowing that it might be two or three years before we get them or I pick them up and I'm like, yep, he's not there yet. And so I shelf it until the next year or whatever. So but yeah, that is what we're doing for my kiddo's fifth grade year. If you have any questions about anything, let me know. And then if you want to look through any of this curriculum, let me know that as well. I like piecing together things. And I just think that for us, for our family, it works best for our kiddos. Always feel free to ask me anything and I'll be happy to, to help you out any way I can. Okay, I hope you have a super blessed day and a blessed week. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.